Hello YouTubers and welcome to another edition of Sonoran Reef. In this week's video we're not going to be paying attention to what's above the hood, we're going to be paying attention to what's under the hood. This is going to be the latest installment of the split sump. Okay, so here we go. This is the stand of the aquarium, obviously where the sump sits. I'm just showing you this to remind you to make sure you guys keep it dry, make sure you treat the wood, keep it sealed to avoid problems down the road. All right, here we go. I've taken the doors off so that we can kind of get a full look of the sump and how it currently sits. Uh, we'll zoom in here in a minute, but just to kind of give you an idea, going from left to right, the overflow goes into the far chamber to the left. It's going to go through some filter socks, then through the protein skimmer into a chamber where uh, right now that just has the probes in it. I'll tell you a little bit more about what I plan on doing that later. Followed by the refugium there to the right. Uh, and then finally, the last stage is the return area where the heaters are. And the pump, you can kind of see it there, is to the far right. All right, so here we go. We're on the left side of the aquarium right now. Just, again, talking a little bit more in detail about this in review. Um, very happy with the way everything is going. Um, you'll see here in a minute that we're going to go take a look at the filter sock area. All right, so here we go. We're at the first area. This is where the filter socks are. I have an acrylic cover here just to prevent splashing up it does happen from time to time so that cover just protects the wood from any possible damage here we go we have the cover off and you can kind of take a look now i'll notice that if i don't change these filter socks about every four days that uh, they get clogged up enough to go through that overflow area there so uh, generally I will replace the filter socks on Wednesdays and on Saturdays. And for the most part that does unless I am feeding quite a bit or uh, something else is going on with the tank. So I'm showing you here, this is an overflow uh, for the collection cup of the protein skimmer. We'll go take a look at that in a minute, but this is a new addition that I've done to the sump so that if I need to drain the filter cup in a hurry, um, I can do it in a couple seconds. Here you can see the top of how that goes into that little collection cup area. So this is the probe section of the aquarium right here. Nothing's in here right now. Eventually I'm going to probably put my media reactors in this section. Specifically, um, I need to start doing carbon again. You can kind of see the yellow tinge to that water. It's pretty evident here, not so much when it's competing against the lights of the main display. I'll talk about that a little bit more later as well, but definitely need to start doing carbon again. Um, I've kind of forgotten about it just because my phosphates and nitrates have been so low, uh, but the water definitely does have a yellow color. Here we go, here's the other side of the sump. Um, this first area, the refugium area that you're looking at, and then there's an overflow area with the bubble trap, but I've currently got foam in there. I just did the cleaning of the aquarium and the foam helps just polish the water. So let's take a look at the refugium. So when I first built this, I wasn't sure if I was going to do refugium here or media reactors here. I had a refugium going here for about a year. Um, then I did some major cleaning of this whole area, took out the trays that had the miracle mud and kind of abandoned it. But uh, I'm not happy with the pH of the tank, so I've decided to go ahead and use it. I installed this new Kessel light that I'm doing another video on that we'll talk about, but uh, my hope is is that as I get this algae growing, uh, it solves some of my pH issues. Here is again the it's just overflowing through that little bit of floss into 
the return kind of holding area. This is where all of my uh, dosing ports are. This is where my auto top off is. Uh, this is just kind of where the magic happens, I guess. I wasn't really happy with the amount of flow in this area, so I did put in a small power head that you may be able to see down here at the bottom. Um, but other than that, uh, you can see that the water line is just below the dosing port, so I don't get a reverse siphon. There's that power head I was talking about and the two heaters there. And then we have the return pump. So you guys have seen the video on the return pump. Um, didn't realize how dirty that was, but um, this is the Vector M1 pump. I've been really, really happy with it. It's been doing a great job on the aquarium. So obviously just returns and goes back up into the aquarium there. So just some final thoughts on um, this sump. Things that I really, really like about it. I'm really happy I went with the filter socks. Um, I think that was a really smart idea. I'm happy that I put the protein skimmer there in that second chamber. Um, I like what I did there with the being able to drain the filter cup or the collection cup if I need to quickly. I take it apart about every other week to clean it really well, but this does a pretty good job of allowing me to just keep everything clean. Um, sometimes I'll run a really wet skim mate and just stick that hose right into a bucket, especially on the weekends when I have a chance to look at it just to really get the water clean. Um, so yeah, I'm very happy with this sump overall. There's not really anything I would change with it, other than maybe if I could have had a little bit more room, it would have been nice. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed the update on the split sump. It uh, was kind of my first do-it-yourself project, and um, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Like I said, the only thing I wish is that I wish it was a little bit bigger, but given that it literally butts up to the wall of the stand on that side, and I've got two inches uh, between the pump and this uh, wall of the stand on this side, I really couldn't have made it any bigger. So um, other than that, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I would encourage you guys to always try to keep improving your tanks. Um, thank you so much for watching. Um, and a little bit later today, I'll be doing a live video uh, stream for the winner of the Innovative Marine Gourmet Grinder. So that should be about 5 o'clock Arizona time. Uh, good luck to everyone. Hope you win. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. In fact, it will probably be another video early. I uh, have an initial review of the Kessel H80 that I want to get out. Um, and since that just came out on the market, normally I would want to wait a little bit longer. But um, given that some of you might be interested in purchasing one. Um, I want to go ahead and push that video out a little bit sooner so that you have an opportunity to uh, take a look at it, make a decision if it's something you might want to invest in. So uh, we'll push that one out a little bit sooner than I had planned. Again, thank you for watching and uh, we'll talk to you next time. See ya.